All right, we'll try this out. Welcome to the Triple R Show. Uh, I had this idea for you know, a buddy of mine to do like a the podcast thing together. Uh, work schedules are different, so maybe eventually we'll get around to it. But I was like, well, if I don't ever do it or try to do something, maybe it'll never get done at all. But on this, we're just going to talk about um, maybe different things through like a Gen X perspective, so some Generation X like the slow burn <clears throat> or rose-tinted uh, glasses that Gen Xers tend to look at things at that I've, I've found, like Hollywood and the generation itself. Um, just a lot of uh, turmoil, I guess. You know, you have your two political parties. Not really going to too much, much politics, but you, have, you know, your Democrats, Republicans in the U.S. that kind of tear each other apart. On a daily basis. Um, so let's see. We'll just start off with a headline. So in the headline is about the pandemic, uh, the infection rates. Go to Fox News. It's about pandemic of violence and murder. That's past the pandemic rate. <laughs> so same old song and dance there. And I did want to bring up Yahoo since Yahoo has stopped letting people comment on most of the articles. They brought some of the comments back. First thing is complete safe after refusing to board flight. Okay. Christina to some Asaga, something coach ordered back. Who cares? Not important. Talking about Suzanne Summers. So the other thing I do like about Yahoo being nonsense again is, you know, it lessens the uh but I guess in this first episode I wanted to talk about Gen X and I call it the slow burn I guess kind of the same theory of like uh, if you boil a frog slowly enough it doesn't know it's getting boiled to a point um, the things I've noticed even when I was growing up so we're all used to having cameras on like by every street corner, uh, every stoplight. And when I was growing up, the adults at the time were furious. They were, they were so mad. I didn't understand like why they were so mad. But they were very big on like big brother watching. Why are they doing this? There's no need to be cameras, you know, spying on us 24-7. So, and to me, it was just a traffic cam. And I was like, well, they're trying to catch speeders or whatever. But if you think about it a little bit more, it's more, well, like almost, I guess everything in the capitalist society, it's definitely more about money. Because you figure all those lights, you, you stick one, you get a couple tickets for your, your local city, then you make another one, you make another one, you make another one, you know, it just adds up. Because we've all been at light, it has been red, there's no one around, it's 3 a.m., I mean, maybe lights messed up or whatever. So if you ran it, say you ran it, and then <clears throat> the camera goes off. So you have two choices. You can just pay the fine, which is kind of garbage because it's not really any fault of your own, right? But they give you the option. You could go to court, right? Have your day in court and try to get this ticket of, we'll say it's a $100 ticket. All right, so $100 ticket. You can pay it, be done with it. And it's probably no points or whatever because it's just a traffic light ticket. Or, depending on the day, you have to take a day off work, go to court, which is never any fun. Go to the courthouse, go through that rigmarole, probably lose a day of pay, which is probably more than $100. So, it's a, just a, it's a get you either way kind of thing, which is really unfortunate. And I, I don't didn't realize it because I was a kid, I guess. You know, the adults at the time were more concerned about people spying on them or watching them all the time. But to me, it's more about um, a money issue. So, and speaking of, like, money is not really taught at all. Uh, I've been watching stuff on YouTube. You know, you watch, like, the guy who wrote Rich Dad, Poor Dad, stuff like that. And I wanted to do like a satire video, and I might, might still do it because <laughs> they never say the meat of the potatoes. You know, like, oh, you got to learn the tax code. 
No one teaches the tax code. Well, what tax code, you know, give me like one example, no examples. Let's read their book, go to their seminars, pay them more money. <laughs> so, <clears throat> and I uh, saw so Jeff Bezos, he's a, he had a more of an intense, um, more of an intense kind of documentary thing. And uh, there's like, there's like nuggets of wisdom in there. Uh, you can even watch Wolf of Wall Street to see how people are easily kind of conned. Like this thing I'm drawing right here. Just, I'm just almost scribbling. He used to do uh, cinema seminars and he would have the white papers you would flip up and he would just ramble off stuff. He's like, you need five steps. You need step one, step two, step three, step four, step five, right? So you're going to follow along because someone's writing it down. And it'll be stuff like <clears throat> be intense. Right, and he write about like that, whatever that is. So be intense, pay attention. It's just, it's just being intense, really. So similar stuff like that. I noticed in a lot of like public speakers and um, people who do those cinema <laughs> Tom Vu seminars. Um, it's interesting to me that those people do have money, but I can't find where they give any um, like know how on how to obtain it there was a guy i can't remember his name um that i was recently introduced to that did talk about uh, insurance and i forget it's i forget what the rule is i have to look it up so but not being prepared for this first show so there's a rule about of course compound interest which you know grows on itself and about of course mutual funds which we've all heard of is a higher return because right now banks are at point five percent point fifty percent uh so even uh capital one used to be ing which used to be at 1.5 at one point in time i think even 1.75 at one point in time which isn't great but this is almost non-existent um there are ways to make money through uh credit cards which i was against for the longest time um but the cashback option is very very valid uh so i i would recommend it you just gotta make sure you pay it off like as soon as you buy something the next day you pay it off on the card sounds easy enough but the reason they can give all this money out is because people don't do that they procrastinate and then when it hits like i looked at mine mine is a 22 percent interest rate <laughs> so they give that's 22 percent. i would i would have to pay them and what they give me back is from one to three percent. So that's uh, that's quite the difference there. And a credit was introduced to me early on in, I guess, the '90s. Because when you turn 18, you get a lot of applications. I had a like a Sears card, which Sears I don't think it's around anymore. I had a LS Airs card. I can't remember so it's like that. This is just like, like a clothing store or something in the, in the mall at JC Penney's. <clears throat> so, and then the the culprit or the lesson learned was the Discover card. So, these people were known to harass you if you didn't pay them on time or very timely. Sears was known to harass people. Unless it was just a store that this went under. JC Penney's is probably about to go under. Uh, similar to Sears, but not, not as much as harassment or known for harassment. Uh, Discover card, almost no harassment because the key for them, they, they don't want you to remember to pay. And they're going to send you, you would send me, you would send me a bill. discover bill come every month and it'd be ten dollars every time so i bought like a tv probably like a sound system or something so i think i was up to like uh either 2500 we'll say three grand and so i paid a little 10 bucks not knowing anything being like in my 20s and I talked really too much about credit. Um, so I paid 10 bucks. 
this of course this this will never go down so i was eventually able to get out of it because i learned I was like, what's the interest rate the interest rate on this was 27 percent which is pretty insane so 27 percent on the bill and you're paying ten dollars every month you're not going to catch it and it, which is their business model right so they don't want you to catch it but so once you get out of that credit debt i had a what would you say an adversity towards them so for years and years and years which kind of made sense because i don't remember cash back being becoming a thing until probably maybe the past 10 years five years so all those years i would have no credit cards right and then in america you want you to build your credit it's kind of a fake thing I had to watch 40 seconds of ads just to load your stream. Really? 40 seconds? Really terrible ads? Like, like that McDonald's ad used to really get on my nerves. <laughs> With the, the, the girl and the guy. And, oh man, I couldn't, couldn't see that ad. What's up, clown? So, for a number of years, no credit. No credit cards. So, I have to get, like, a, I get a car loan. Right? Because you have to have a line of credit for big purchases if you need loans it's like house <clears throat> another car etc cetera, etc cetera. so got that ended up buying a town at some point in time so credit score was high because you know um i learned from the discover bill i learned this in my 20s so from the 20s on i learned about not messing around with credit and paying the minimum. Sally was the same 20 seconds. It was the same ad. <laughs> you will buy Tony Hawk. And that kind of brings me to like another thing I want to hit on eventually, which is advertising. This is very um, insulting, but effective. Um, because you plant those seeds and it'll stay with you like for, uh, for almost ever. Like the milk campaign when I was a kid. Does the body good? Anyone my age in America will probably know that that commercial right off. Does Tony Hawk have a new game coming out? I do like Tony Hawk, though. It's a good example of someone actually doing what they probably wanted to do their entire life. Which I guess is probably kind of a percentage of the population that would be probably pretty low. But that's like a, a credit rant. Uh, I wanted to really talk about, like I said, Gen X and rose tinted glasses. It is, and you know, so see as a male, you don't want to get, well, I guess, yeah, you don't want to get kidney stones. You really don't want to get those. <clears throat> so, I say whole milk. Now, there is an argument that all natural milk is good for you. So, I don't know the science behind one of those. I know pasteurized, store bought milk is definitely probably terrible for you. So, there's also an argument that dairy in general is not good for you. Since we're not technically cows, but anyway. So I can't remember. I was I don't know if I was watching home and stream or the, or what it was. I mean, it's just been on YouTube, and they were talking like they were talking about the the golden age of Hollywood. Like this one kind of really annoys me. You drink soy almond milk has a lot of sugar in it. And soy milk, you don't, you don't drink too much soy as a guy. If you know what I mean. Too much soy, man. And. Oh, you get it. Oh, and sweet, okay. So, 
so watery watery almond milk like i said you're talking about the golden age of hollywood meaning to them would be probably 60s to mm, mid 90s or early 90s we'll say 90s But if you remember, and I remember as a kid, <clears throat> during these times, especially, especially in the 80s, and I'm pretty much throughout Hollywood, they're just kind of, to me, kind of bags of crap. <laughs> because the 80s Hollywood, people just forget that, like, Drew Barrymore was a kid. Just getting drunk. At Hollywood parties with tons of adults around thinking it's funny and it's not funny when uh when I think it's probably like what, eight years old maybe it's getting drunk and you're a grown adult so and it, it seemed like it was one instance you know it was like I was just kind of shrugged off it was like you know and then later on oh she had problems <laughs> luckily she came full circle and came around and it seems to be okay which is good. Uh, like little lesser known things that I found, like Christina Applegate. So Kelly Bundy. I guess <clears throat> the producers were on her about her weight and said she was getting too fat. Too fat for married with children. And I guess this was a, an ongoing thing. We kept going and going and going. And eventually, from the story I've heard, or I kind of kind of researched, so I love the in-depth research on this show, but the story says that uh, Ed O'Neill stepped in and was like, you need to leave her alone, you know, or you know, pretty much shut the hell up. And Ed O'Neill, of course, plays Al Bundy, and Al Bundy is married with children. So I would say, dare I say, an icon. Clint Eastwood. I do. I mean, I like a lot of, of course, I grew up on those movies. But I'm not going to sit here and blow smoke up those people's butts saying they're better than people now or worse than people were before them. Because, you know, some uh, dark secrets come out, like uh, well, some comedians, as we've seen. So you also had, so you had Drew Barrymore. I don't know how you spell her name, but it was, um, Drew Barrymore. Uh, Christina Applegate. And I think her name was Tracy Gold. I don't know if it's like on a I or a Y. We'll go with a Y. Um, Tracy Gold. I think her name was Carol on Growing Pains. Carol Seaver. Same same issue. She had weight problems and I guess depression from it. I can't remember. They seemed to be a little more kick gloves with that one and like saw it was more of a problem, which is odd. Let's see, it's around the same time, about around the same time. So she had that. Drew and he had many others. The worst, I think, is the different strokes kids. What you had? Um, what was her name? I don't know, I spelled it wrong. That would be messed up. Yeah, you had Dana Plato. I was awfully suffering depression. You also had um, the Todd Bridges. So these these iconic Hollywood people surround these these kids, right? But there's no help. There's seemingly no help given, or anyone cared, and bad things seem to befall these people for no for almost 
usually no reason I would think uh, crime for him and unfortunately passing for her which I think was probably avoidable um, but yeah I can't remember where I was but people were talking about how good the good old days of Hollywood there's no good old good old days of Hollywood there's no good old days at all um i mean even when it first started i don't think there was really i mean we pretty much are just we pay them for their service but somehow we got idolized and award shows which now people kind of you hear more people talk about how dumb award shows are and like how they're just kissing each other's butt so that's good to hear that people kind of like realize that and i don't think anyone watches those things anymore um but it was a big thing in the eighties to like sit sit down, watch your you know, eight o'clock NBC and like watch the Emmys or the Grammys, so you know, who would show up just to say like two words and hand out an envelope and that was it. No real entertainment value at all for the most part. So I think I had like an opening song and a couple acts. And all these stars were just sitting there, walking up, getting a pat on the back <laughs> for uh doing her job and pretty pretty silly so like i said hopefully uh i'll get a, a co-host at some point in time figure out what time i want to do the show more topics set but i run it only like six more minutes to fill so we covered some gen x um money that's credit like i said which i i do you should go watch some of these millionaires and like try to follow their their speech and it just kind of goes in circles and they don't seem to give any info to me if you find some please let me know because i would like to like to watch it um and hollywood and we did, well, did a couple of headlines let me refresh these headlines see if they changed Nope. <laughs> if you get it, uh, society, just look at the Yahoo headlines. Ridiculous. I will uh, cover the Olympics. Yep, they're all pretty cool. Got Fauci up there. Lucas Gage explains what it was like getting. What am I going to say that? <laughs> um, Fetty Wild. Oh, some bad news there. It's all bad news. It's either bad news or really silly news. So, I'm not going to read any of that. We'll leave it on a. A joke. What did the fish what did the fish say when it hit the wall? Thanks for watching Triple R. Have a good day or night, wherever you are.